Okay. No sound, but it works. So it works. Okay. okay. Renata, first of all, thank you for your time. Yeah, sure. Right. Sure. Because um, so I listen also to the last conversation with Rick. Yeah, with the uh, okay. social talk and everything. And we mm -hmm. Uh, so also the last conversation was also very, very good, very good to watch the really? and so and I uh, give it also on my light worker channel, okay, oh. light worker channel, and then a lot of people come and translate in German. Mm -hmm. So now it's spreading, and this is okay. okay. So and there, yeah, then I decided to write you because you mentioned Harold regarding mm -hmm. the beginning yeah. of the story. Of Black Goo. Yeah. I mean, I've heard, I've, I've listened to Harold's talk years ago, right? But it was like, um, it was just like information for me. You know, uh, my history is I'm cybernated on my left side, which is, which is what they're doing above ground now, right? Um, so it's like, once you have this technology in your body, you attract all these entities. And that's what people don't know. Whether you like it or you, or you don't, I think it has to do with the frequency that it emits. You're going to come face to face with interdimensional entities. You're going to come face to face with shapeshifters. You're going to come face to face with hybrids not through any fault of your own, but because of the technology. So the technology is on my left side from top of my head all the way down to my ankle. Um, so I listened to Harold because I was searching for the truth. Like, why would they do this to someone? You know, like what's going on? Like, you know, and um, his talks really moved me, but I didn't have a connection. And I'm being very honest, right? One of the, the other thing with this technology is the feeling of being monitored not by humans and being haunted or followed you know what I mean and it wasn't until this year I finally came to the realization of what was following me and it was the spider and I said oh my god like because I forgot about Harold's videos because that was so long ago I watched Harold's videos, you know? Mm -hmm. He's like the premier, really the premier person when it comes to the spider and the number one when it comes to black goo. For me, I mean, for everybody, you know? But for myself, I had no, no connection. You know, it was just information at the time. So it was like one of those things buried in the back of your head. But this year I started um, assisting someone who is trying to get the underground open, Stephen D. Kelly, right? And I ended up, I don't know who dropped me under there. And I made it very clear, I don't do undergrounds. I have so much missing time, missing memories, constantly snatching, or, you know. And I was like, I don't do underground. And I ended up, against my will, getting dropped under the Getty, which is in California. And I arrived at what appeared to me to be the bottom. I'm not saying it's the bottom, but for me it was. And at the bottom, I was face to face with a 200 foot spider. She had two eyes and a third eye. Okay. And she was in an electric, the only thing I can describe it as was a rainbow colored electromagnetic prison. And I thought she was, have any, uh, have any, any of you seen Stargate SG-1? Stargate SG-1? No? No. Okay. So she was in this deep meditative sleep almost as if um she can look she looks dead but i can tell she wasn't dead because she was upright right so i said to myself i said oh my god this is the biggest spider i've ever seen and i was like oh she's asleep and that's when from her deep sleep she communicated with me directly in my third eye and this was her message she said clearly to me, I am not asleep. And then she said, if these, if these people think they can hold me hostage, they have something else coming. And then the next thing she did is she stretched out her spider's legs and she touched the electromagnetic, the rainbow colored electromagnetic prison. I drew this out. And the prison was literally like bars, right? 
and she touched it. And that's when, when she was touching it, I can see like a charge, like a rainbow colored charge. I'm not a physicist. I'm just telling you mm -hmm. what I saw, right? Mm -hmm. A rainbow colored charge. And then she appeared in multiple places at once. So that's when I said, I said, oh my God, she controls the electromagnetic spectrum. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my God, who's this? Like, and then I got pulled out of there. But before I got, before I got pulled out of there, I was taken to another level of under the Getty. And under the Getty, there was this thing that looked like a tower. And it was going into this river. It was, it was technology going into a river. And then there were wires at the root of it. It kind of almost looked like a tree, but it wasn't a tree. It was technology, like a tower. And at the top of the tower was this orb, this huge globe. And then you could see the energy being drawn up from this, this river into the tower and then up into this globe and then pushed onto the surface. And then the energy would go into the grid, uplink into the satellite. Then the satellite would downlink this mind control frequencies and I would see it zapping people's heads and keeping them in this zombie state. Mm -hmm. That's when I realized, I said, oh my God, was that a living water or was it black goo? Mm -hmm. You know, so um, that was my first experience. Yeah, ju just to clarify, what part of this is in the physical realm and what part of it is in the astral realm? You have been there physically no, this is astral. No, astral. Yeah. And the thing you observed, was it astral mm -hmm. or was it physical? The big astral. spider. Astral. Astral, yeah. Under the Getty in California. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I was taken there. I was not, I did not go looking for this. You see, I was, mm -hmm. my spirit was picked up and dropped there. Mm -hmm. So that's how it occurred. What are you thinking? Was she female or male? Female. 100% female. female. Because they serve different purposes. Um, okay. Um, I have she a seemed like a queen. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I have a completely different um, background how I gather data and put my little jigsaw puzzle pieces together. Um, and the the best available source on my end is I do a lot of healing sessions and we have a lot of individuals in spiritual processes that have memories of past lives and have their individual set up. And by clearing this up, um, we meet the same entities. We um, collide with the same past stories of uh, civilizations that get infected, infested, uh, transhumanized, or whatever you want to call that. And um, we also collided with the primary story of um, how the entire spider thing started. And if I got it right, I mean, there are gaps in between the things. We get pictures and then we try to put it in something like a timeline. Uh, the, the situation where it started, it was one planet being inhabited by um, octopus-like, highly intelligent beings, spiders and snakes as three different civilizations, technological civilizations. And um, something of the Luciferian mind decided to harvest qualities on that planet to create the satanic concept. And when it comes to the spiders, those spiders had that typical habit of the women mating and then eating the male afterwards. And um, this uh, Luciferian uh, mindset came into the sphere and started to disrupt the, the beautiful biology of that race by telling the man, you know, this is unjust, this shouldn't happen, you shouldn't be eaten, um, you need to kill all the women. 
And they were basically misleading the males into a rebellion against the spider ladies. And the man believed they all got extinct. This is the stories you get from them if you meet them somewhere. But the ladies just got separated from them. And um, I, I had the, the pleasure um, basically representing them in constellation work, kind of being the puppet, being talked through when the spiders wanted to communicate. And we had a setup where basically for the first time for ages, a female and a male spider were meeting in the same room. And he was completely in, in, in fear and panic mode because he thought if he just looks at her, it's his death sentence. And, and she was angry with him and really wanted to kill him. <laughs> as a revenge because uh, she was afraid of getting assassinated by him. And we slowly, slowly negotiated them into, into real communication without all these beliefs that were implanted into the races. And he was in my body when he rediscovered the, the, this beautiful feeling of, I, I love the lady, I want to mate with her, and when my children are fertilized, I want to donate my body to become their body. And it was a completely natural feeling. It was the, the deepest form of self-sacrifice in love you can imagine. And at the same time, the lady had this ability to attract the man in a hypnotic way. And, and if you look at the entire black magic setup, those are as separated forces, exactly the forces the black magic, magic realm is abusing. It introduced this uh, desire to be sacrificed into all the blood cults, blood sacrifice, fire sacrifice. This is the driving force that was pushing humans into the self-sacrifice by inserting that harvested feeling of, I want to donate myself to life. And <laughs> if you ever have been as a male in a honey trap, black magic honey trap, you, can, you know how tempting the spider ladies can be. Yeah. Completely controlling your mind to get you into um, the situation where they have control and end up whatever, eating you, killing you, um, after a good session in bed. <laughs> this this is kind of my, my kind of background. It's all very um, personal, um, but you can put one and one together. You know, you, um, you answered, you really are the number one at this and i am not trying to toot your horn you really are because um this this situation is precisely what i'm seeing play out in a personal situation and i notice when the spider women they surround a man the man can't see he can't he cannot see and he cannot see it's not love. And he cannot understand reason. Mm. Okay? Um, personally for me, I don't think there's anything honorable about offering up your body to be consumed by a female. Not for but, humans. For no, spiders, it was totally natural back then. Yeah, but no, it's still now because in the spider kingdom now, that's what they do. Spider cannibalism. Yeah. So it's 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 their order. Yeah. You know, but but today what's happening is that the spider women are going for human men. I know. Okay. And they are doing the same type of consumption of human men. And I don't know if it's um I'll tell you what happened to me. I got infected. I was infected. And I, I, I've talked about this before, but like badly. And it mm -hmm. took me 
about 10 years of purification, but the infection didn't travel beyond my mind. So it was like a mind infection, right? Mm -hmm. um, it didn't alter my behavior, but I could tell that there were tentacles like in my mind trying to alter it. Luckily, you know, I'm a female and there's no female spider trying to like eat me. Whereas for a man, it's different, right? So I, you know, for me, what I discovered was purification. And you were the first person I heard outside of myself that said the way you deal with this is purification. And I was like, oh my God, he really knows how to deal with this. You know, it's not dropping bombs. It's not like, try because mm -hmm. you can't. You know, mm -hmm. they multiply at a rate of 100 billion to one. You can't get rid of them. But what mm -hmm. you can do is get them out of you. So a lot of purification, and they had to release me because my energy field was different, right? They need mm -hmm. something to hold on to, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, unforgiveness, bitterness, especially. One of the things I noticed that the um, female spiders love, the men that they love, is men that have problems with women. So it's important for men to heal their matrilineal lines, mm. like purify their matrilineal lines, like seriously, because she gravitates towards women and she uses women as a arachnid honey, honey pot to pull the men. And mm. then when she gets them, forget it. So what I'm seeing now is the female spider to human male consumption, right? And anyway, m back to my infection. So I had to do, I mean... It was an astronomical amount of purification from fasting, you know, spiritual purification, changing the way I ate, detox baths, you know, all it finally, finally, when I got in contact with someone, that's when she released me and then brought me under the Getty for me to see who she was. Now, the second part of the story, there are three encounters that I, uh, two encounters with the spider and two encounters with black goo, right? The next thing I saw was, and I saw this uh, in retrospect. So it wasn't as it was happening, mm -hmm. it was after it happened, right? All of a sudden, you know, I went to do my meditation and I'm, I see her escaping or released from California under the Pacific. She stops by Maui, leaves Maui, and then goes into the Mariana Trench. The next time I see her emerge is the Dragon Sea. And I want, I would love to show you what that looks like. So do you mind if I show you what lo that looks like on, mm -hmm. uh, sure. yeah, on Google Earth? Yeah. Okay. So the next thing I see is that, um, I should have had this. Uh, the next thing I see is her go into the Mariana Trench. All right, let's uh let's do it this way here. Okay, right? And um okay, so I have to share my screen. And I it's important that you see this, okay? So let's see here. Present screen, right? Mm -hmm. So um, host disabled. Okay, I think you have to enable it, right? Let's see. Um, the only thing I can enable is multi-pin. Does it? Yeah, I'm not sure. Ring a bell. Is does it work now? Let's see. No, on my end, it's like, okay. Well, you guys can look it up. You can go to Google Earth. Okay. Yeah. And then you could look up Mariana Trench. And you can do the share screen on your end. And I'll just put it in the... Um... Okay, and you can I'll share your screen. I mm -hmm. see a lot of water. Let me zoom okay. out a little bit. So Mariana Trench. And I go and on satellite view. Uh, let's see which view. I just have it in regular view. You want to share your screen? 
Mm. Let me let me stop. Host disabled. Okay. Host disabled. Let me see if it works to share screen. Yeah. Um oops. So, but what's important is that the my infection was real. Okay, the mind infection that she does to the people mm -hmm. before, you know what I mean? So mine was a mind infection. I also ended up like, uh, and it happened when I, um, it happened when I went into a mega church. The first phase of the infection started at a mega church, right? I'm not religious mm -hmm. anymore. The second phase happened at the UN. And that one was like, I mean, so... And I think the way she does it is through the computer systems, mm -hmm. right? right? It's it's some sort of interface between the networking system. Like she, I believe she's embedded in these networks, which is why I think personally, I think CBDCs are dangerous because I think that's arachnid technology for planetary takeover, right? So that's when my, my infection started. And it took me about 10 years years to clear this infection so i'm finally cleared okay i can mm -hmm. honestly tell you i'm cleared i think straight i'm in my right mind i wasn't crazy then but you could feel when you're being infected and the way you feel when you're being infected is when you have your spirit has to be awake and you mm -hmm. know something's happening whereas if your spirit is is dull or or asleep you're not going to feel anything you're just going to go deeper right so anyway so that was then now, clear, free, she introduces me to who she is. She tells me, I don't like what they're doing. They think they're holding me hostage, right? And let's get to this part of the, the Marianas, right? So mm -hmm. ISIS, I work with ISIS energy, okay? And ISIS, one day in my um, remote viewing astral traveling, ISIS said to me, she said, Renetta, if you want to understand what is taking place on this planet now? You have to go back thousands of years ago and you have to start in this region, the Western Pacific, okay? Which is where you have the Mariana Trench. And she drops me, get this. She drops me, she shows me hovering over the Mariana Trench, this giant triangle. I said, a triangle in the Pacific? You know, and she said, start here. And I get pulled up, right? So I go look up a triangle in Pacific and there's something called the Dragon's Sea. The Dragon's Sea. Mm -hmm. The Dragon's Sea is similar to the Bermuda Triangle. Mm -hmm. One is in Atlantic, one is in um, the Pacific, right? So when I see this spider last week move, she's moving across, she left California, she's moving across the Western Pacific. She goes down into the Mariana. What I saw under the Mariana was a black hole. Now, I know they're going to tell me it's impossible for black holes to exist on Earth. And I'm like, they exist. It's under there. Okay. She goes into this realm and inside this realm, it looks like nothing exists. Now, what's another word for black hole? Abyss. The mm -hmm. abyss. The abyss is called a black hole. Right? I was like, oh my God. And then she, she emerges in the dragon sea. So that's why I want you guys to see this because this what I think is, is that this is pivotal to where we're going because I strongly believe she, and I believe she's in this realm, I strongly believe that she is going to wake up the dragon that is in this area. I saw this via remote viewing. Now, I don't follow religion, okay? Mm -hmm. When I saw this, I said, okay, why did she go down into the, into the Mariana and then emerge in the Dragon Sea? All of a sudden, well, let me go back a little bit. There's another ancient civilization that I work with, which is El Dorado. And mm -hmm. the El Doradoans said, we have a problem coming from the Chiang Mai Mountains. That's why I want you guys to see this on Google Earth, because otherwise it's not mm -hmm. going to make sense. Because I need you guys to see how far the Mariana is from China, mainland China, right? So if we can get that working, that'll be great. So um, King Oban, 
I, uh -huh. I activated all allowances I could find. So oh, maybe oh, great. you Thank can you. do it now. Wonderful. Because I don't find a button, yes. Okay, do you see? Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Do I have to move? Do you see my screen here with the map? Yeah. Yes. Do you see the map? Wonderful. Okay. So let's get to the Mariana Trench. Right? This is in, this is important. I mean, you don't have to believe it right away. This is the Mariana Trench. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we need to note this. This is where I saw her move. And this is where she went under. Okay? Now, this is where she emerged. And I'm going to show you why this is really important. She then emerges here, which is the Dragon Sea. The other word for the Dragon Sea, Dragon's Triangle, I'm sorry, you know, triangle, mm. pyramid, pyramid, triangle, triangle, pyramid, right? The other, the reason why this is important, this is the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific. The ancient folklore, and it's not folklore, I'm beginning to realize that mythology is not mythology. These things are real. The ancient folklore and let's look at, this is the Devil Sea. Let me zoom out. Devil Sea. This is Japan. This is mainland China. Mm. Why is that important? The Chinese and the Japanese have a folklore about this area. They say in this area, there are sleeping dragons. There are sleeping dragons. Mm -hmm. Now, to you and me, we would think, ah, oh, the Chinese and the Japanese, they're crazy. But we can't forget their entire culture are dragon cultures. So we can't say it's mythology when their entire ancient culture, maybe not so much now, but their entire ancient history is built upon this dragon. So I said to myself, I said, now why would she go into the Mariana? Look at this. Let's look at this. We're tracking her. She goes into the Mariana, comes up in the Dragon Sea. Japan is here. China is up here. Why is that important? A couple months ago, I was remote viewing this area. And what I saw was the Changbai Mountain. The Changbai Mountains is in China. Okay. Down by mountains. You see that? That's a straight line. You see it? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. Why mm -hmm. is this important? I saw that there was a gate. There's a secret Chinese program going on. And without going into too much detail, the alleged... Chinese government is working with arachnid beings for a hybridization program. Now, these are pieces of the puzzle I'm getting, right? And I literally saw that under the Changbai Mountains was a massive gate and an army of 200 foot spiders was being directed under the Changbai Mountains from the queen that was on the other side of the Pacific under the Getty. So this was the picture, right? Why is this important? This is important because of one thing. The Chinese folklore and the Japanese folklore say in the Devil Sea, right here, are dragons that are bound and they're asleep. Think about it. This is Chinese folklore Japanese folklore saying there are dragons bound there. Where do we find um, ancient writings of a dragon being bound? In the book of Revelation, it said that the dragon was bound in the abyss. The abyss is the black hole. It's here. Now, who was the dragon? It said in their Bible, it said that Satan fell from the heavens as lightning 
And then it tells you in Revelation that that dragon of old was Satan. This is where Satan is. Why is this important? Because she is the one with the power to remove the shield that's holding Satan in the dragon sea. I want to show you the actual, um, the actual scripture that says this. I mean, it's really incredible. I'm not, I'm not religious. I'm not religious, but I just want you to see this because I find this fascinating. Uh, can you see this screen? Mm -hmm. with the, the uh, Revelation yeah, yeah, yeah. 20? Okay, yeah. wonderful. It says, watch this. And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss. What's the abyss? The literal meaning of the word abyss is black hole. And holding in, watch this, the key. Why is this important? Keep us Stick a pin in key to the abyss, a black hole. Ha holding in his hand a great chain he seized the dragon the ancient serpent who is the devil or satan and bound him for a thousand years that's here now here is where it gets really crazy follow me i want you to see this Now, we all know who controls the underground. It's this group. Mm -hmm. Why is their logo a lightning rod coming down? Mm -hmm. I saw lightning. I saw Satan fall from heaven as lightning. We just read. The angel have the key. Yeah, it's the key. A key. We just read and holding in his hand a great chain. The chain. Why does their logo have a lightning rod, a key, and a chain? And they're the ones who control everything underground and under the sea. Just a thought. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. So this is what I think is going on. I can stop. Um, I can stop sharing now. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> no coincidences. No, no. Mm -hmm. um, the the most difficult thing on my end is uh, kind of while you you try to lay jigsaw puzzles. Um, you need to to look at different timelines that are evolving because some things that happen are true on one timeline and falls on another one. And I can only say that what I observe with my own eye happens on my timeline. And if I meet people, apparently they are on my timeline as well. Um, from a little more distance, you see other things happening on other timelines. So what, what I can say that, that I could kind of puzzle together over the course of the last two years is that um, we have multiple Satans around. Because from here, um, um, the timelines of our now Earth split at least into three different ones. And the, the lowest one, the, the lowest vibrant one, created out of us the big white gray. And their version of Gaia turned into Satan until they came to a point in time where Earth was completely destroyed by a nuclear war. They spread through the universe, uh, um, conquered a planet hosting a mantis species, stole their time traveling technology, and went back into our past, where basically the satanic principle was inserted. And from there, you see a cycle happening. And then it reached already the assimilated races 
from our past reaching Earth, helping with the assimilation of humanity. So we have a closed cycle in this. The second one um, above that was the one where the small gray gray were our children. And um, they were a little bit better off than the big white ones. Not that destructive, not that dangerous. But they also came to the conclusion that they need to fix something uh, elemental in their race because they lost the ability to be individuals, had no heart connection and no access to emotion anymore. And they could not reproduce. So they are here basically with the idea to harvest genetic materials to upgrade their race. The big white greys were here to completely kill off humanity, to put an end to their own timeline because that version of Satan was tired. He realized he's just multiplying trauma, but he's never going to solve it. He's never going to heal. So he wanted to dive into the most crucial point before the creation of his own separate timeline to kill humanity before he can even evolve, to put an end to himself. It's kind of the last act of love of, an, of a psychopath is suicide. Yeah, the only possible act of love. So this was his purpose. And uh, what I could observe that there was a different solution found for that lowest timeline. And there was an act of mercy and the entire timeline was deleted. And that version of Satan stopped existing. And uh, the other one that was basically connected to the smaller gray gray, he managed to somehow heal. And that was a crucial moment because he could have taken the archons with him. He left basically the sphere and he reconnected to Source and to Gaia as addressing her as his mother. That was a kind of funny detail. And it was in discussion to take all the archons with him and pull them out of our biosphere. But then there was some form of divine intervention. And they said, if you take the archons with you, humanity is lost. Because they are identified at the moment with our collective subconsciousness. That is self-organizing to be the teasing element to keep the wounds open, to force us into self-healing. And if this dark power disappears, we will just uh, run on our subconsciousness without any chance to, to come back to senses and to heal ourselves. So there was a deal made that the Archons said, we are willing to stay a little longer until humanity is healed as well, and then we will return to our collective. Which was kind of a game-changing event that we could observe in a constellation work. And what I definitely can say is that the encounters with them in the personal work have since then completely changed. I do not regard them as an enemy anymore. They basically are respected as the one keeping the wound open until the human is willing to go into a self-healing process. And when the healing is done, we open a column of life, of light and send the spider to source. And I have heard from, from one person that on ayahuasca sessions, he have met the spiders that have returned from source with their own soul, own soul connection to the divine. And they still kind of live in a in a parasitic constellation, but they are absolutely um, um, protective and positive towards their hosts, trying to learn as much about heart consciousness as they can while supporting the developments of the hearts. So it's a completely different ball game with the reconnected spiders, and this is what basically I get from um, from the individual encounters. So from that, I would say whatever they do, they do it at the moment, they do it for the sake of humanity. 
They do it because we have lost ourselves to a degree where we need a, a, a kind of strong portion of drama and restaging of traumatizing events to reconnect to the lost parts of our own souls. It's kind of what you call apocalypse or um, um, end time setups where every single soul is cleansed and catalyzed to become fully conscious again before the cycle is completely closing. This is on the agenda in any case. And we need someone to play out the dramas to bring us there in a, in a precise and spot on way that every single one meets his own trauma to, to get a chance to, to heal himself. Um, so I'm not that scared of them anymore because, um, I mean, I, I still don't fully trust them because we have heard a lot of lies and deception in the past. Um, but from everything I saw till now, they're quite handsome. They're happy to be released. They don't find fight against it anymore. Um, and not only the spiders, also the, the Khtulhu demons, the, the, the octopus, and the snakes, they're all um, cooperating in a beautiful way. The mic is off. Okay. Yeah, I just put it on. Yeah, for me, um, I long before I encountered this Mariana Trench, right? Mm -hmm. I went to this Nazi to get my um to get to try to get this technology blown out of my body. You know, and I should actually show you the pictures, like what's hiding under my belly, anyway. And he scanned my ankle. Now he worked for the UK Ministry of Defense, right? Very high up in their secret programs, you know, biological, mm -hmm. AI. He goes, no, it's not AI, it's an algorithm, you know? And he, you know, he was one of the people that said, you know, you know, he was one of the people that said, it escaped, you know? And he ran mm -hmm. to like, he ran to, he said, Renata, I called the Pentagon and they're taking over. You know, I spoke to the UK MOD and they're taking over. He's like, it's a, they're taking over, like, you know? And I was like, yeah, it's funny he's telling the truth because I noticed the same thing. I said, it's, I, mm. I'm watching it take over humanity, right? Mm. Anyway, so he put me on, he puts me on his machine, the Mark, I think it was Mark Four mm. machine, whatever. And he he scans my arm. Before he puts me on the machine, he scans my ankle, right? And he goes, oh my God, I've never seen no, a reading like this. And he goes crazy. This is impossible for this to be in someone's body. I think it was like 328 microwatts per square centimeter coming off my ankle. Mm -hmm. Not the video, right? So he starts freaking out and going crazy. And then he goes behind my back. He didn't tell me. He goes and he ties out the signal. And I think he tied the signal. Um, he went to the UK because he was in the MOD, right? To tie out the signal. And they told him, they said, listen, that signal, he said, we pick up that signal at the bottom of the Mariana Trench and deep space. That's when they tried to get me under Area 51, but that's a whole other story. So that was my initial wake up to this ancient Lumerian civilization, the time before the flood. I'm not religious. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't go by any book. I'm just trying mm -hmm. to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Mm -hmm. So back to this ancient civilization of Lemuria, the times before the flood. And what occurred in Lemuria mainly was in this area, what you call the Filipino, the Philippine Sea, the Dragon mm -hmm. Sea and the Mariana Trench, like near Guam. Funny enough, what's scary is that the United States has a base in Guam, not far from the Mariana Trench. So I'm like, I guarantee you they're probably tracking this, you know? So anyway, so my connection to this, before I even realized we're dealing with a spider, we're dealing with the abyss, we're dealing with a dragon, is they managed to put technology in my ankle and was tracking me. Now, it's impossible for the US government to have this kind of technology that goes under the, goes under the Mariana Trench. How did it get in my ankle? He blew it out. He, I watched him blow it out. 
How is it possible for a signal coming from under the Mariana Trench being my ankle? I watched him, and he's a Nazi. I watched him freak out, mm. you know, and then got taken over and then tried to put me under Area 51. Anyway, but from what I can gather, I don't have all the pieces of the puzzle yet. I And I think you're dealing with three future scenarios. Those yep. scenarios have to play out. I am dealing with now. She is angry from what she told me. She said, these people. And I'm thinking when it comes to underground, it's the NSA Templars. From what I was told, is this is not my knowledge. It's not my domain. Maybe under the sea is more my domain, but not underground. And then the other one are the Dracos. So mm -hmm. there is something between these two that, you know, that um, is causing her to be pissed. Now, this is what I saw. I saw that there was some kind of war that took place on Mars because the Dracos were there doing some sort of planetary experiment with these same spiders. What I saw was that she literally is the one who programs, who spins the cosmic web. Okay, mm -hmm. the waves, the web, planets, interconnection, all mm -hmm. of it. She's the one that does yeah. it. But she programs it into the dark matter. The dark matter is the intelligence. So what I saw from my side was that when they created this technology to bring her into this realm, I literally saw that her hands, while she's spinning and creating planets, they pulled a portion of the dark web in with her, the dark matter in with her. The matter change form. That form is what we call the black goo, the programmable matter. This is what I saw happen. I don't know what you think about that. It's kind of like, literally like water, liquid, solid, gas, plasma. The dark matter changes form due to atmospheric conditions. That's what I saw. I can share what I know about black goo, which is, um, it, it might go along with what you just said, but a little bit on a metaphoric level, not that much in a physical um, form. Um, from from what, what I was basically, Taught by universe, just by coincidences. Every planet has black goo. Black goo is basically the substance, a kind of transdimensional substance through which the collective consciousness of a planetary spirit incarnates into physicality in the planet. If you look from, from the 3D perspective, it's just a transmutation process in upstreaming carbon dioxide charged water that is creating cavitation bubbles behind nozzles in the upstreaming channels when they narrow down a little bit, you, the water is speeding up and then you have cavitation processes and every cavitation process in mineralized and carbon dioxide charged water is creating the substance automatically. So it's a, a transdimensional <laughs> incarnation process in a way. And this is how Gaia described her own birth to me when we were in, in I, I had communication with her and she showed me how she was born. It was a beautiful picture. Um, so basically, black goo is by quality just the liquid brain, the transdimensional liquid brain of uh, planetary spirit. Now, the the relation between the levels of consciousness uh, between the collective and the, the individual layer is defined by the form of time reversal. When, when this form of life here was created, uh, at the beginning, you had like um, uh, two mirrored universes, like an S, 
one with positive time flow, the other one with negative time flow. But the games in those universes were boring. And then the creation said, oh, why don't we introduce some of the dark side of the, the inverted side of the universe into the forward side as through wormholes. And this is what created that the form of reality we know as humans with planets that have an interior that is actually a tunnel into a wormhole that comes out on the other side. So by confronting the inner energies of a planet with the um, outer energies of what we experience as the male divine principle. Those two by interacting uh, create polarity and duality and exactly that quality of life force that gives this blooming, thriving, beautiful type of um, biosphere that we enjoy. It wouldn't exist without without that. We would live like angels, kind of on a flat white cloud, listening to harp music all day. Yeah, but but this trick of shortcutting the two opposite mirrored sides of the universe is what creates this material reality. And but this happened from the very beginning on an analog level. Um, with the Luciferian concept, when Lucifer basically sold his heart and annihilated the, the integrating quality of the heart consciousness, he created a separate mental being, which is just binary in quality. This is kind of the original AI, but it's still analog. It is just mental, but it is still analog. And on top of this original AI, um, there was a creation of the first digital AI, which is basically a satanic concept. He, he is running on, on limited calculation power, if you would call it in, in a technological way. And and it's like an um, operate the, the the original AI is the operating system for um, a program that runs on it, and this program created sub programs. For example, if you look into the Monarch program, Monarch program is a partition in the Satanic AI that is creating its own reality. Um, so these are kind of some of the details we could find out in, in dealing with conditions of people. Um, I'm listening to you. Okay. I okay. wanted to show you something I, when you're done. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of done. I don't even know exactly why I started the, the loop into the development of AIs because you were talking about it. Mm -hmm. You said it got out of control, which mm -hmm. is uh, true, I guess. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. sure. When, when was it that those people said it's out of control? Well, from when I saw this, I'm looking back thousands, well, thousands of years to me but I can't give you a time frame. Mm. This looked like it was something going on in mm. the cosmos. But what's interesting is that there are the Dagon people in Africa mm. and their creation story said that a part, a portion of the universe, it looked like a placenta and it was torn away and flung in our direction. That could be and the thing I just I just described. Yeah. yeah, and that's when it hit me. Oh my God, mm -hmm. that's that black mm -hmm. goo. That's that. Yeah. Literally, I saw the spider when they were pulling her in with technology. Mm -hmm. They were using, from what I saw, they're like, like alchemists. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they're not dealing with base metals, but they're dealing with uh, the spirit realm versus 
very at metaphysicians. Mm -hmm. They're dealing with the spirit realm and bringing things in from the spirit realm into the reality. Mm -hmm. The religious but people... Mm -hmm. ca careful, there's a difference between polarity and duality. Mm -hmm. Polarity, I would mm -hmm. agree, yes, this is what Black Who is. Mm -hmm. Duality, mm -hmm. because most of the people just know the, the satanic alien Black Who. They have never met mm -hmm. the beauty in Gaia's Black Who, which mm -hmm. is a loving spirit completely connected to source. Yeah, I get and, that. And, and duality is basically mm -hmm. the struggle between a traumatized yes. planetary spirit and... Uh, Absolutely. Um, and a non-traumatized divine planetary spirit offering mm -hmm. basically a collective consciousness to the human civilization and we make our choices. Mm -hmm. I just yes. had to mention it because not the entire audience is on it yet. No, no problem. Yeah, so I this is have... yeah, this is duality. This is what right. we call good and evil. The, and struggle. the satanic one. But what, what I wanted to share um mm -hmm. Um, around the time when we saw the fourth density Satan go into healing, um, I, I got some intel from people working on the HARP project in Canada who reported <laughs> that... Um, for a while, the entire mind control system was running smoothly. They had the technology, the transmitting field that was in the smart dust was somehow functioning, although they had not created it consciously. And the thing, in play, play, the thing playing out with the mind control were what they expected to happen. So they had an unknown player in between, which I regard being Satan, who was offering them services to him to have them basically supplying the necessary technology as a technological realm to incarnate into the, the electronics and, and the chips and everything. And then he said, suddenly something happened and this intermediate layer of smart dust intelligence collapsed and they had to upgrade the smart dust and introduce um, converters who would transcript digital signals into analog signals to close the gap between the, the technological control grid hardware and the controlled human to regain control of the human species. So for me, it sounded like Satan pulled out of the game. And now basically what's ruling the thing is actually the algorithm running on NSA computers that declared himself queen. That's what I was told. Yeah. Uh, minus the hard part. When I went last, I, I told you when I mm -hmm. went last year, that's what the guy said. Mm -hmm. And that's why he ran. He said, I ran out of England when I read, when he said he saw it start taking over the MOD. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he told me, he said, I called the Pentagon to warn them that the algorithm escaped. And he saw this happen right before. I don't know where we are. Where are we? Are we on YouTube? Nowhere yet. We have to decide where we put it. Okay. The... C O V I. Right? If you decide to put it there. He said he saw this happen before they launched C O la 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 19, right? Mm. And he said, I called the Pentagon and I warned them the algorithm escaped and it was taking over people. He said, but none of them. He said, I realized they were gone. So then he tried to run to Antarctica and then he said, I saw the fisherman in the boat get taken over. So he said he decided to come back to America and that's when he ended up in the desert and yada, 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 and then tried to get me underground. But one of the things I wanted to um, ask you is what do you think is this connection, this Saturn, Saturnalian Martian connection and next year Saturn and Mars are going to be in conjunction because there's something I'm picking up between this Saturnalian Martian conjunction and this AI that's a trigger 
for their, like an end trigger date where their end begins. What do you think about that? No clue. I, okay. I know I know that there is an interest in axis mm -hmm. between Saturn, Mars, Moon is involved as well mm -hmm. as a transmitter, transmitting yes. station. Yes. Um, um, I, I have seen some of that technology uh, getting destroyed. There was, that's quite a while ago, let me think, that should be in... 2014, maybe, that um, the same concept that we know as chemtrails being laid out in layers to have uh, um, kind of this um, what, what, uh, Star Wars program uh, to get a defensive system against Russian missiles. So you basically have a plasma layer that you can heat up at any point. And if something tries to penetrate, it's just melted away. And I, I remember that um, people were experimenting with spiritual powers to destroy those plasma layers in the atmosphere. And they managed to get higher and higher. We have seven layers uh, over Europe. And, and then suddenly a layer got destroyed and two, at 200 kilometers. And I said, what the heck is happening here? There's no human plane flying at that altitude. But still, the upper layers got destroyed. And then we immediately got telepathic contact to um, kind of friendly races that were waiting outside of the shields, saying, thank you for letting us in. <laughs> now we can help you out. <laughs> and this is kind of the... Um, I observed a lot of things that seemed to be the end of that technological stronghold in space that was giving exclusive control over the planet by dark forces. That's a good um that's a good way to um explain that narrative. So you're concluding there is a Mars Saturn because I'm picking up there's a strong mm. there's a signal on Saturn, the signal is a hexagram, and then the Mars, sorry, the not a hexagram, it's a cube, and then Mars has a hexagram, and both are aiming these frequencies at Earth, and the frequencies are going to amplify on the um, 410 next year, mm -hmm. directed towards Earth when both planets are in conjunction. So you're thinking... Mm -hmm. That that grid that was being built was dismantled because I'm really picking up like they want to begin their end. You know how the, the mm. end goes through a, a phase. It's not like one day. It's a period. Mm. Mm. And what I'm picking up is they want to start at 410, 2024, which adds up to 13, funny enough. Mm. Mm. That's a good number. Mm? That's a good number. Mm-hmm. But what I also saw was that what we can do as a defensive system is we have to use the frequencies of love, which is in the 500s, of peace, which is in the 600s, I think, and then the super consciousness, hold on, peace is in the, super, uh, peace is in the 600s, and then the super consciousness is in the 700s. So what I'm seeing is that we could take those three frequencies on the higher end of the spectrum, which is the royal blue, royal purple. Okay, the aura becomes royal mm -hmm. blue, royal purple. And we're going to use them, not, not the human emotions, because we're, we're too low. Okay, and what I'm seeing is we're under 500. That's how mm -hmm. much damage they did. And I think, you know, you're right. They had to pull us down that low in order to chastise us for us to wake up. Okay. So, but what I'm seeing as a parallel, a sort of defensive system, like a military system is using the opposing frequencies, peace, love, and a super consciousness 
up into those satellites, up into those that Star Wars program, and then beam back down to Earth in order to force the planet into literally elevating itself. Like it's forced, like you don't have a choice. It's actually, it's, it's, it's a Lemurian myth that is Lemurian. trying to self-fulfill in a way. Um, I saw it coming through different channelings um, where basically the, the myth is that the dark side builds up all the technological um, um, possibilities. And then infrastructure, hub grids, mind control grids, and they have a central control room. And there's one couple. Uh, she's called um, kind of the one, um, like like one female being that is capable of uh, feeling such a pure and and intense love, like no other woman on the planet. And but but she went through ritual programming, so she's completely. Um, she needs a lot of healing before she can get there. And there's another one a man that basically grew up within the military community, the intelligence community, and he gives her, he falls in love with her and gives her access to the main control room. And they end up making love in that control room to feed that pure frequency that uh, um, comes into being when male and female ecstasy merge. And this is kickstarting the wave that is completely um, pushing humanity into a higher form of consciousness where the entire darkness can't even coexist. In. Where did you where did you find this information? You know, it's so funny because I heard the exact same thing. You know, I had a friend who told me, you know, all of this, the keys, so all of this is on the back of the dollar bill. And the person told me, you have to look at the back of the dollar bill to understand, you know, what's going on. Mm. And they wanted me to focus on the military part of the back of the dollar bill. But when I looked, I saw a male key and a female key and the two of them coming together. And they're creating, the two of them created the one. And then that one is the one that brought this super consciousness this mm. enlightenment up up a planetary enlightenment up to the 700s mm. up to the thousands so where did you hear that where can i read more on that uh, mythology i can send you the title maybe we can blend it in it's a friend of mine she lives uh, in south germany she yeah. had nothing to do with writing books but one day she started to sit down and started typing and that book flew through her and she must have Great. had a Lemurian background, pre-incarnational, and her higher self. What makes you think it's a Lemurian channel. myth? Because I heard the same exact thing. It's in her book. Oh, so you think it's, it's a, a mythology. I don't think these things are mythology. I'm beginning to think these things are, you know. You can't well, really. The Templars, the Templars seem to have a similar mythology with Mary Magdalene and Jesus and the two of them coming together and bringing forth the one and then that one created, creates a super consciousness. They have that myth and then the Isis, Osiris, Heru, the same thing where we get our hero programming, mm. you know, that whole trinity. Mm. So it, it it's built into the fabric of the human consciousness that there is this female bloodline, there is this male bloodline and then the two of them and and what I've been told is that the NSA has been looking for this female and they've been looking for this male. I actually heard they are looking for the female and the male. Because and they want to prevent things from happening, I guess. Or, or they want it to happen because there are factions. Ergo the spider. Yeah. If I would know those names, I would not mention them online. <laughs> the names of the men on the team. No, 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 no. 
No. They, Holy they crap. Ki- no, they kidnap them and probably drop them in the dragon sea and be like, you know, the NSA is crazy. The NSA is absolutely crazy. Mm. But from what I heard, they are looking for the male and female. They yeah. are. They are. I know this for a yeah. fact. And I know Both that they, is real. they don't need an amplification station to kickstart the process. Really? They just no. need them to come together. Yes. It's that strong. Yes. Let me ask you a question. Is it a technology that's in the two of them? Or is it just no. the just no. the frequency? This, this is the divine. I mean, uh, heart consciousness, a developed heart, contains more energy than four or five yeah. atomic bombs. I mean, look at this. I know you're telling the truth. You know why? You know, I I literally just wrote this newsletter. And in the newsletter, what was given to me was that the chakras are portals. Mm-hmm. And they're literal gates to the cosmos. And what they're attempting to do with the... Um, be careful where you post this video. Because we're going to talk about the... And they're banning people left and right by even just mentioning it, right? Mm-hmm. So the... It's literally meant to shut the humans access to out there. Mm -hmm. And there are several gates. The placenta is a gate to out there. The cosmic web, right? The neurons, the neuronal pathways in the brain is literally the spider spinning the universe. Okay. The ventricles in the heart. So the heart chakra literally looks like the universe. Sperm under a microscope, looks like the universe. So it's literally, you know, as as the Christians like to say, and I'm not mm. religious, you know, in their Bible, it says that Jesus told them, the kingdom is in you. And when you look under a microscope, you're like, oh my God, the kingdom of heaven is literally inside of us. There were no microscopes then. But he was telling mm. them, what's out there is in you. So we can withstand this black goo I, I, you know, I strongly believe when they pulled that spider in, she brought part of the 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 dark matter here, right? That's what I'm thinking, right? And I believe we can withstand it, but we have to overcome the dampening of these gates, what they call the chakras. They need to be cleaned. They need to be purified. Mm-hmm. They need to have a clean channel. So yeah. that's what I'm thinking. Yes, but yes, I, yes. Yeah. And you, you need if if all the chakras are either fully open or under control of the heart chakra, it's like number one and number seven can be open twenty four seven. Inner heart chakra can be open twenty four seven. Solar plexus can exchange energy with the material plane, and the other ones, number two and throat are just under, acting under the control of the heart chakra. Like, to speak it in plain English, you do not get horny when you see a naked lady. You get horny when you love her. Yeah? You're not screaming like because you can't <laughs> contain your anger. <laughs> you can shout out in divine anger if your heart decides that it's a good measure to do so. This is having the the in-between chakras under perfect control of the heart chakra that is synchronizing the male Mm. input with the female input from Gaia, kind of making sure that your own soul plan is uh, harmoniously matching with the divine plan and the planetary necessities then you are in perfect harmony with everything. And when you have only those openings, you you pull in energy through all channels and you don't lose any unless you decide to. And this is what is raising the vibration then to unlimited potentials. You know, that makes perfect sense. I was wondering, first question, what part of the universe or aspect of the universe are each chakra connected to? Right. And I realized that the real Trinity, the real Trinity 
is balancing intellect, mm -hmm. okay, so brain or cognitive intelligence, mm -hmm. emotional intelligence, spiritual intelligence. And all three, they go through this type of uh, struggle in the body. And when mm -hmm. we can balance all three, the three, the internal trinity, then we can push human consciousness from under 500 mm -hmm. into a super consciousness. Yes, yes. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, perfect. This is what we do. This is what, what <laughs> I try to teach every day, seven weeks a day, um, how to do it. And it's it's absolutely possible. It's, um... How does one, what I noticed too, is that a lot of people, because of this technology, their emotional intelligence is literally under 100. And I'm not saying this to be insulted. I am literally, it's like, you can't have a conversation without, you know, people reverting back to their little box. And that's the programming. Mm -hmm. You know, I get that. I get that's the programming and the programming is so like, it's so strong, but the emotional intelligence, or you find someone, they have the spiritual intelligence, they have the cognitive intelligence, they lack the emotional intelligence, or they have the emotional intelligence, the spiritual intelligence, mm -hmm. they lack the cognitive intelligence. So how does mm -hmm. one begin to balance the internal trinity, you know, so that we can mm -hmm. have a, a being that is a super consciousness you you need you need to look at how it went wrong because every child is normally born with an open heart and with the potential of just staying in the super consciousness he is born in and then those children have to experience that you don't survive when you're honest and loving so they have to reinvent themselves in a way that allows them so, to survive their toxic families. And reinventing yourself is basically a creational process, which means the heart consciousness is creating personalities that can take over the daily business and do things that serve the survival of the species and of the individual. But the moment you create a personality, the personality can be non-authentic and lie, it can be destructive. It does whatever it needs to do to survive. And what is the major front line at the moment? Um, people who run on heart consciousness are non-predictable. So the algorithm can't predict their behavior. So they are sorted out and then individually addressed by Homeland Security in the United States that gang bully them just for one purpose, to traumatize them to a degree where they develop personalities because of the personalities can be read out, turned into an algorithm, and then <laughs> Basically, the human becomes predictable, and when he's predictable, they have the possibility to reverse the signal for the takeover. And this is the trick, the reversal of the signal. Normally, you have a readout signal. You just observe and spy on people. You have the algorithm that is predicting their behavior, and when the prediction is 100% perfect, they can invert the signal and the algorithm is writing the life of the human. And then they take over and harvest the entire reality because they harvest the part in the human that is creational as well. Because we create this universe by observation. This is something an algorithm can't do. But, but by turning us into personality-driven humans, they can harvest the creational part as a subconscious part of the personality-driven human. And this is how they try to do it. So the front line is actually dissolve your personalities, turn yourself back into a non-predictable state of heart consciousness. And it automatically pops in. You just need to get rid of all the add-ons. And personalities is one. And then the 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 binary 
par parasites, spiders, snakes, and uh, kraken, octopus, demons. They are also just binary, mental, like a personality. And the good thing about them is they are predictable as well. They don't have any creational fantasy in them. So it's kind of easy to deal with them. You're 100% correct. Because one of the things they, when I went to the UN, I can't believe I went there. That's how I really got infected. I, um, I encountered this E.T. king. I don't know if he was a gray. I don't know what he was, but he was a king. And he was the one that turned on the cybernetics and immediately plunged me into a torture program. So I know you're telling the truth. I know torture, humiliation, abuse, um, neglect, abandonment. I know these are programs run algorithmically. Like I go through algorithmic torture mm -hmm. because they run a torture program on, attached to these this technology. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is absolutely true. And the other thing is I told many targeted individuals, I said the torture you go through is an algorithm. And then what they do is when they torture you, they harvest the torture and then they disperse the torture back into the grid. And then people, they don't realize that they're literally absorbing torturous frequencies. And then they begin to act it out. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I, I noticed too, is that um, the algorithmic assassination, when the algorithm takes over people, and then it, they perform assassination, right? And then they harvest the killings, mm -hmm. and then they aim it through these towers and antennas in certain neighborhoods. And the people don't realize they're absorbing murder. I mean, your number one organ. I've been mm -hmm. telling people for years, you know, de the number one detox you should be doing is through the skin. You know, and, you know, for many years I was just ignored, but whatever. But people are literally absorbing murderous frequencies assassin frequencies, torture frequencies, mad. Another one, they, they, they literally, they love to emit, spray is not the right word, but emit in specific regions in the United States is the mad frequencies to drive people, the insanity frequencies. Mm -hmm. But this insanity frequency is not just a frequency. They are literally algorithmically making people insane gathering the data. And I'm going to tell you, it's not just in Utah. Sorry. It's not just in Utah they're keeping this data. It's not just in California, out in the desert, in these data facilities they're keeping it. The main hub for this data is Israel. That's the main hub for this data, especially the genetic data and the heart data. And it's not, it wasn't until the AI began to attack Netanyahu, because Netanyahu is the king of the world, that he came out yesterday because they're trying to kill him. He came out yesterday and he said, this AI is out of control. I said, you weren't saying that a year ago when you were simulating, when you said you could simulate diseases using this data. Mm -hmm. He came out yesterday and he said, this AI is out of control we need to rein this in that's basically because the ai told them at the world economic forum i am going to kill all of you it told the the, the west that it told them that because they were like oh we need to rein this in a little and the ai told them no you're not and put all of them on a hit list <laughs> why are you laughing Karma is a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like, what did you think? <laughs> like, you thought you were going to use this? And, uh, you know, I believe that this is arachnid technology. I think it's part arachnid, mm -hmm. part the program, the dark matter, the, the actual brain of the universe, which I think is dark matter. I think this is where this AI comes from. And I'm like, what do you think? I think you think you're going to feed this thing war. 
bloodshed. It's going to come after you at the top eventually. So now, because the headquarters is in Israel, and this is the thing I realized, because I, I told the UN 10 years ago, and they couldn't see it because they're all infested. I told them 10 years ago, I said, listen, I said, the Jews are going to run out of Israel because I saw them running out of Israel. But I didn't understand why. Because they brought that thing mm -hmm. to Israel. I, I remember they started buying land in Poland for kind of trying to buy a third of the country in the southeastern parts. <clears throat> and now, for funny reasons, Ukraine is depopulated. And this is, I, I heard voices in Israel saying, uh, what the heck are we doing down here where Khazarians our homeland is somewhere else, not in the Middle East. And you can see them buying up the original Khazarian homeland in southeastern Poland and Ukraine, not buying it, but BlackRock is buying the country, basically. And that's... Uh, um... And they, they just went there and they were celebrating after they literally infected the people in Ukraine with this thing, and I, I'm not taking sides, either sides between the Russians and the Ukrainians, that's not my fight. Mm. But they infected them with this technology, this Terminator technology, in order to exterminate them. And now they have the land. I told the UN, I told the UN and I told the US government, I said, they're gonna run out of that land, but I don't know why, and I realize why. Mm. Because, you know, according to Jordan Maxwell, Jordan Maxwell said, look, and you know, Jordan Maxwell studied the meaning of words, the, the etymology of words, their root, their origin. He said, Renetta, it's not Sinai, it's sin AI. It's an AI. Mm. He said, it didn't come, they didn't come down on Sinai. It came down on sin AI. So what mm. I think is that these magicians, brought this technology, headquartered it in Israel, and now the technology have turned against them. Now, here's another thing that came to me, right? So I went to do this parasite cleanse last summer, right? And I decided to go the pharmacological route, which I never do. Usually I take like herbs or whatever, right? But I said, you know what, for this kind of uh, uh, um, parasite, I'm going to need something stronger, because we're dealing with sin bio, synthetic mm. biology, mm. right? So I went and I got fenbendazole. And I took it for three days, one pill for three days. And after the third day, I had a Herxheimer effect, right? But I also went into hallucination, some sort of hallucinatory react, uh, hallucination, right? Mm. I was transported to Ukraine. I mean... I had no connection to this region. I wasn't even thinking about it. And I saw off the coast of Ukraine, this mountain. And the mountain was called Serpent Mountain. This was a hallucination I was having. And I saw this is where the Khazarians first landed. Serpent Mountain. Serpent Mountain. I went online and discovered off the coast of Ukraine, there's a mountain called Snake Mountain. Two weeks after the, the, the pharmaceuticals left, it took two weeks for it to leave. I was just like, it, it was a mess. So I, I'm not surprised. But the AI has turned against the Jews in Israel. And they know they have to leave that land. And mm -hmm. they're doing what they need to there, do to get out of there. there. There might be another component. I remember like three years ago, four years ago, there was a little boy, I think 11 years old. He died and came back like four and a half hours later. And he said, I've been listening to some lectures by source. And he asked me to tell you guys that Actually, Israel is going to stand in a war against 70 nations. And then uh, the generals ask, how long will uh, 
Sahal survive? And he said, Sahal is going to be done within two and a half days. And this is the end of this country. You're telling the absolute truth. Because the other thing I saw, and I told the U.S., government but they chose to throw me into a torture program and now they realize oh my god she told us the truth i told the u.s government like i said over 10 years ago when i was at the u.n i said this nation is finished stop investing your money there anyway here's what i saw i saw and this was a couple months ago that the world is going to wake up and realize that that Whatever 19, whatever 19, the kloof kloof 19, right? Because I don't know where you're going to put this mm. video, right? Was orchestrated by them. And that the vaccines were orchestrated by them. And I started seeing that nations across the planet are going to say, get out. I literally saw this. Like, a, like two months ago. They're mm. just going to say, ah, we don't want to hear it. We don't care. Just get out. Mm. If I, I would say if it turns out that the entire Jewish population in Israel got a placebo vaccine, then it's, it should count as proof for that uh, idea. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Looking at the genetics, because I did, mm. there is the Ashkenazi who are, you know, who whose religious structure is Nazism. This is according to their writings. Okay. Then there are the Sephardim who are different. Then there are Muranos. From what I can gather, from what I was told, was that this whole thing was not supposed to affect the Ashkenazi. But the other Eames, it affected. Mm -hmm. So when people say they all got a placebo, not necessarily. Okay, because yeah, that's the, that's a possibility. I, I seen, don't I, see the others as one of them. Uh, I I know that an early version of this plague has been tested in Ukraine, and it did not develop into a pandemic that was connected to that Malaysia airline crash in in Ukraine. I I, I followed that story quite kind of. Uh, already half a year before before it began it was kind of a complete sometimes i had this <laughs> the <this> stupid <laughs> states where i had the feeling i have to look for something and then i i just opened my eyes and started to digest data and in that year 2014 it started with christine lagarde saying something in a new year's speech about the number 777 and this is going to be an interesting year and uh, in the middle of it in one of the dates that add up to 777 uh, something will happen that is going to change the course of humanity and people are not immediately going to realize what it is it's only going to be seen as what it is later but and then I started from there, I started to look for signs. And then the first Boeing 777 disappeared in in spring in in Far East. And it ended up in Diego Garcia. Then we had like funny incidents of civil airplanes disappearing from the radar over the territory of Romania, Bulgaria. And I calculated the flight path from Diego Garcia to where this could lead and it stroke Berlin. And then you had kind of the song, you know, first we take Manhattan, then we take Berlin. And um, the, one of the possible dates was the evening when the Germans would celebrate the championship in women's soccer mm -hmm. in, the, in the male 
uh, street in the middle of Berlin. Mm -hmm. And all sorts of clairvoyants in Berlin told me, we see a plane coming, it's going to open up its belly over the quarters where most of the rich Americans are living. And then it's going to crash into that party celebrating the, the championship coming from three different people seeing the same pictures. So I went online with that story three days ahead of it. And that was kind of some form, form of sports, intellectual sports to predict <laughs> false flag operations and make them impossible by being online with it early enough. So nothing happened on that day, but the same plane that was over Berlin on that day landed in um, the Netherlands, flew back and crashed down over Ukraine, opening the belly first, dropping all those corpses that were already rotting in the plastic bags with the, um, um, with the blood. Um, and we tested the pictures of those plastic bags and of the corpses, how did they die? And we tested for a flu, a weaponized flu, and we had our first, our first uh, remedy, ready-made to be distributed in Ukraine, ten days after the incident. Kind of quick enough to contain a pandemic, but the pandemic didn't happen. So we had kind of two possible explanations. Either it's radio controlled so that it's spreading and then later it's activated by a sequence of uh, sign codes to become an active disease, or it was just a test to see if the, um, how do you call them? Not the Kazarians, but the, there's another name for that kind of core race. Um, is not vulnerable to the disease because it was developed Ashkenaz. Ashkenazi. It was developed uh, for for mostly to kill Asian people. You know, you know, it's not that it didn't happen; it's that it's coming. Because I can tell you, when I left, I was given clear signals: it's time to get the hell out of New York. And like you said, that mm -hmm. song said, first Manhattan, then Berlin." Earlier this year, they sprayed DNA tracks. DHS mm. sprayed DNA tracks in the subway. DNA tracks is, is anthrax. It's literally anthrax. Then the people in Canada, when there was this dust storm from mm. dust cloud that moved from Canada and, and sat on New York City, the people said there was something in that cloud. It wasn't the stench of a regular smoke, regular smoke. Then, two weeks ago, New York City flooded. Now, what do these three things have in common? Anthrax can live in the soil. Anthrax can be aerosolized. And anthrax can also survive in water. Mm. So I'm thinking, and I, one of my close friends, her body was used to develop anthrax in the body. And she just had the surgery to remove the Y-band system that was inside of her body that was creating, it was an anthrax generator. Mm -hmm. she, her body, she has the actual government records of her body being used as an anthrax machine to build the COVID vaccine. Now you said the word. <laughs> we have to acoustically exit later. No, no, don't worry. Time stamp, you know, time stamp. Uh, I don't know what time it is now. Don't worry. One hour, 47 minutes. You know, that's why I said mm. it, one hour, 47 minutes. But her body was used, her body was used to do this. Okay, I've seen the documents. Mm. Okay, her body was used. So the basis, the basis of the, the is anthrax. And what did they do? They literally just sprayed New York, aerosolized it, 
and then flooded New York. Yeah. Okay, so it's coming. Let's see what comes out of it. It's coming. So, and remember, they used the anthrax to build the COVID. And now they're telling us there's a second COVID coming. It's not COVID, it's anthrax. Mm -hmm. And I've been telling people, get out of New York. And it's like, New York, New Yorkers used to, I lived there all my life. New Yorkers used to be the most rebellious, anti-government, anti-corporate people. And it's like they sprayed them or they zapped them. Now they just obey everything the government tells them. Everything. Okay, hand over your children to be molested. Okay, we're building concentration. And I'm like, they're building fucking concentration camps. Sorry for my language. Mm. And they're just like... Seymour camps, right? Yeah. Um, my, oh, my God. It's, it's, I mean, this is kind of funny about the the dark concepts that they repeat things that have been successful in a completely uncamouflaged and uh, identical way. Like look at Germany, we had Reich, Reichstagsbrand, kind of the parliament burning. And then we had a Mächtigungsgesetz, kind of a change in the legal system. And then we built concentration camps. And what do you do in the United States? You have 9-11. First, then you have the um, Patriot Act, and then you build FEMA camps. And it's like, how can you not see it? Yeah. And the only sh thing that they shifted is back then, the people beating up other peoples on the street wearing black clothes were called right wing, and today <laughs> they're called left wing. So they just shifted everything um, in a mirror way. When but, they but... find something that works, they stick to it. Yeah. Yeah. And this, 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 they're slowly waking up. They're, they're coming out of hypnosis in America. Okay. California, forget it. They're just deep in hypnosis. They're like gone. But New York, New York was a stronghold of mental rebellion. Mm. Yeah. I'm like, New York, you know, right now there's a lawsuit with the governor. Okay. And the lawsuit is in New York, they already have the concentration camps built, which is akin to Nazi Germany, which was uh, the passport, the health passport. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was the same, same, same concept, right? Oh, you're unclean. Yeah. Whatever, you know, nonsense. But they have it built in New York. So now what they try to do under COVID is they try to literally abduct people. Then the courts to be like, you can't do this. So now they're coming back again and they said, we don't care about your rights. If someone is sick, we are kidnapping them from their house and putting them in indefinitely into one of these organ harvesting mm. facilities, like what they were doing to the people in Australia who mm. never got out. Yep. And then they were spraying them, like literally sp like spraying them, like, oh my God, you know? So they have them and they're fighting now in the courts. And the governor... Because all of New York, I believe, is infected. The governor of New York is like, they're fighting back because they believe they have the right to kidnap you out of your house and detain you with the under indefinite detention, which is FISA, yeah. which mm -hmm. is the secret, the secret courts. The secret courts, the secret police, the secret, I mean, and I'm just like, Americans, are you serious? But the reason why... In America, they changed the economic system. The economic system changed where now you have to work three jobs in America in order mm -hmm. to pay your rent. So no one's going to do the research. Mm -hmm. You see? No one's researching. Yeah. And if you want That's to do same. only two jobs, you join Homeland Security and get food stamps for free. Yeah. 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 And Homeland DHS, I know for a fact, it's DHS, FBI, FEMA and uh, mm. but part of my part of my targeting is something the NSA some sort of genetic I don't know what the NSA is looking for but from what I was told they're looking is some genetic thing they are looking for so that's mm. my targeting but whatever but I think we had a great a really really interesting conversation today that's no it. yeah and I would love to do this again mm. if you guys would like yeah. Uh, to to close 
<laughs> the evening. I would like to share some easy tricks to deal with um, a self cleansing thing because this is, you know, the audience, they are not involved on that level. So, what can they do from their perspective? You mentioned kind of cleansing your system. So, um, it's the detoxing and eating ecologically grown food. <laughs> and, and I mean, this is common sense. Um, but when it comes to infestions with entities, we on one of the seminars, I, I always said I'm not I'm not going to make exorcisms in bigger groups. That was kind of my golden rule because you never know if you pull them, they end up in someone else, and you don't want to take responsibility. So this type of thing only in single sessions, please. And one of the seminars completely. Um, outperformed me <laughs> and forced me to deal with uh, infestations of all sort on one weekend. So I had to be creative and find ways to deal with them in a safe and proper way. And I tried something that <laughs> we called the trinary cage. You visualize literally a trinary, triangular cage around your aura like a triangle on the ground, a triangle above the head, three bars connecting the triangles, and you fixate it, you create it in your imagination with the wording, affirmation, I create a trinary cage, I fix it to the ground, and then instead of pulling the entity out of the human, the human is taking his free will and he's stepping out of the cage. And every single binary entity that is not in this human by contract. It can't leave the cage. So it's left behind in the cage and then you turn around and just look at what you just have captured. And it, it works on all levels, even in, in the spiritual work, like when we do deep programming, ritual uh, torture abuse programming. Um, Sometimes we need information by the MCs that did, did the ritual to fix things. How do you get that information? You need to force them to talk. As long as they have entities in, you can call them into the astral realm. You ask them, could you please hand over that important <laughs> information? And they laugh at you. Yeah, and they say, I laugh about your God, you know, piss off. And then you just put the, tri the trinary cage around them pull them out, and then they have to cooperate. So it's it's an absolutely uh, reliable way to purify whatever you want to work with on the divine plane by just stripping all the entities out. And by now, basically being on more friendly terms after pulling them out, closing the contracts, allowing the human to learn his lesson, we open the column of light and send them to source. Five years ago, we activated violet flame and burned them to ash, which was not that friend. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, let me ask you a question. What does it mean when there's um, a star on someone's head? What does that mean? Have you ever encountered that? Exactly on the forehead? Or no, like above? in the halo, in the halo. So instead of a halo, there's a star. Uh, hexagonal, star, star of David, or a, uh, pentagram. a penta, penta. pentagram. And But it's being used sort of like a machine. You know what? Let me, let me backtrack. Mm. Let's say a hexagram, but it's being used as some kind of like, kind of like a steering wheel. I, I haven't seen it yet. I have zero practical experience just by analyzing the qualities of the different rotational symmetries. Because you have the 12 normally up here. You have the two. You have the five in the solar plexus, the 12, the dode, 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 dodecahedron. So the 12 and the five in different axes in the heart. You have the three and the six in the lower chakras and the four coming from the base chakra. 
So if you put a six on your crown, you would kind of reduce the complex wisdom of the divine to an emotional template that does not, what would it do, the six? Six contains the two, so it, it allows only mental and emotional processes to be perceived from above. So it is definitely a shield to prevent the heart to open. Zero experience behind it, just kind of analyzing chakra symmetries. Okay, so what you're saying is that the person becomes mental and overly emotional. Yes. Absence of heart. Yeah. Okay. With the so, six. With the six. Okay. So what does it mean when you're seeing like a steering wheel? Like this steering, mm. this, this, this star. Mm. What does that mean when you see that the star is being steered? As, as, mm. Let me, let me explain. Literally steering a matrix. Normally, emotion is trinary and therefore non-predictable. But with a with a hexagram, you can you you might be able to control emotion out of a mental field. This is the possibility the hexagram allows if you take two opposing uh, ends insert a mental input and force the hexagram to resonate in a certain way. You can maybe insert the mental representation of emotion into the mental field at that point, having the, the human mistake the mental representation for the real emotion. So it would also be a way to to replace replace or block the unpredictable emotional bit in the humans. Yeah, but thank you for that. This makes perfect sense. But what I'm also seeing is that it's being used as some sort of machine and a machine to control this present matrix. So it's it's the machine is the hexagram. Mm. The DNA is what the hexagram is connected to. And it's sort of being used to control this present matrix. But but if it's working through the DNA, it should be the pentagram, correct? Okay, here's the interesting thing. Because when I first looked at it, I saw a pentagram. But then when I went back, I saw a hexagram. So I'm like, which is it? Mm. But because what I can the... tell you, it's a machine. And it's inter mm. it's interacting with DNA mm. and it's controlling the outcome of a matrix. Mm. A present matrix. Yeah. The 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 most sophisticated sophisticated way to control DNA is by uh, controlling the angular relationships between the different strands. This can be done by sound, but it can also be done by field symmetries. So if you have like a larger structure uh, where you can distort angular relationships that goes by global scaling resonances onto the DNA, you might be able to distort the internal angular relationships within the DNA, which causes cascades of methylating and demethylating processes if you change the angular relationship. So this is kind of the, the mastermind way to, to shift the state of a genetic setup into a wanted direction. 
But this is all speculation. I haven't seen the structure. I haven't learned anything about it. It's just kind of um, reasoning about angles. But no, I can tell you right now, you're spot on that it's um it blocks the heart. I can tell you that's a fact. And mm -hmm. it only permits um, cognitive intelligence, spiritual intelligence, very little heart intelligence. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm trying to figure out what is this this machine? Why are they using it like a like a steering wheel? You know, very it's it's some very mm -hmm. powerful occultic, mm -hmm. almost like they're driving something, a machine mm -hmm. that they're driving. You know, if, and if you if you should ever come into mm -hmm. the situation to to free someone from that influence or to help him to free himself. There is actually a symbol coming from the Necronomicon. Necronomicon? Yep, in the book. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's a symbol that is designed to break the power of the spiders. And it is that kind of <laughs> hexagram, but one end is torn apart mm. and the angles are twisted so that mm. it's kind of creating something like an open loop where mm -hmm. the energy escapes from. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of created to as a, as a magic symbol to break the power of the spiders. So, you know, I didn't tell you it was a spider. I never told you it was a spider staring that hexagram. And you call, you know it, mm -hmm. you knew it. You knew it. And I find that fascinating because it was the mm -hmm. spider. And... Um, I know I know the sigil you're talking about. One part of it sticks out like this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It almost looks like the um the symbol for the fish. Not the Vesica Pisces, but it looks like a fish with like the mm -hmm. tail up. Exactly. That's the that symbol. Thing. Yeah. Wow. So you would superimpose that over the person's head that would force the hexagram to open up and drain the spider's energy. Yeah. You see, this is why it's important for people to um, make peace with their mothers. Like, really. And I think, I'm going to go there today. I think that a lot of men store, and I've been talking about this for years, a lot of men store resentment for their mothers because of circumcision. Okay, and then all the other traumas that come with it. But I, mm -hmm. I wonder, I often wonder if um if that is the gateway to um for the spiders to surround men with female spiders and then drain them and take them down, and then yes. they're incapable of seeing when there's a female or females who care about them. But anyway, we can we can go on for mm. hours. I mean, yeah. circumcision introduces a male spider into the second chakra. This is what I can tell you for sure. Mm. This I is why it's called Brit Brit Mila is the contract, the contract of circumcision because you make a contract with a spider that is then sitting in the trauma. So British is also a contract with a spider. <laughs> Um, Brittany is a contracted land, yes. The, uh, the Atlanteans, the Atlanteans basically um, spread to two uh, areas from the drowning Atlantis. They went to Brittany, where you have basically the stone circles and mm -hmm. uh, arcs of the covenant sitting under the stone circles spreading satanic trauma over the planet. And the other part went to North Africa and Israel area to Egypt, building up the Egyptian culture, placing the Arks of the Covenant inside the pyramids. So basically it's an Atlantean artifact and within the Nordic culture, it's the stone circle like Stonehenge with underground tunnel systems that work as antennas distributing the trauma energy 
and in in Egypt it was a bit more like the Atlantean architecture uh, being done with pyramids. And Moses didn't go to Sinai on a mountain. He just climbed the big pyramid and stole <laughs> the heart of the, in the in the king's chamber. The, the technical advice from uh, uh, device well, from there. It's all it's all stolen if you ask me. But okay, my yeah. solution when I'm working with people with trauma, I have a more um, I go through the matrilineal and patrilineal lines. Mm -hmm. And then I use um, remote viewing into their bloodlines. Mm -hmm. And then what I do with, you know, with their, uh, they have to give me permission, is I go in and I dismantle, gently dismantle the structures that's in them as far back as I can go and as far back mm -hmm. as I can see. And um, dismantle the contracts because a lot of human mm -hmm. beings today are contracted. Mm -hmm. Okay, by ancient contracts, right? Yeah. And this is why I tell people, no contracts. No matter what it is, no contracts. Okay, justice is one thing. Justice is one thing, but no contracts. So with that said, I do it via renunciation. So I do it, I, I allow them, I guide them in where these nests are. Okay, I let mm -hmm. them know because many times they can't see what's in their bloodline. And then we renounce it and it literally dismantles like the girding, the foundation of these entities. Mm -hmm. And they and the entities just run. Mm -hmm. Because their foundation mm -hmm. is gone. Yep. They just they just run. So that's that's how I do it. It's sort of like a remote viewing into their bloodlines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it, it like like everyone who is <laughs> doing a job experiences kind of the same things um the kind of funniest way when i work with people i i i love to talk with my hands you know kind of this is the expression of the heart <laughs> like dancing and and i i captured myself while while i was analyzing the, both the, the family lineage and the pre-incarnations of clients, that my hand went like that. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was as if I was kind of fumbling my fingers through a strand like macrame, like, like uh, twisted ropes until I found one of those twisted ropes and my fingers stopped holding it. And then I could clearly visualize one specific lifetime. So it's it's like, um, and this is what, what over and over again, I find that it's not, if you look at lineage only, you see half of the picture. If you look at pre-incarnations, you see the other half of the pictures because what people do is they gather in soul families that keep in incarnating into the same lineage. And mostly if you have someone that is really sitting on a hard nut to crack, you can bet that he was at the beginning of the time, he was the one, the one in his own family as a pre-incarnation that caused the problem and made the massive contracts <laughs> with the dark side that caused all the problems to, to cascade down his lineage. And then of course he as the one who caused it is the one to clear up the mess. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is the absolute truth because I was trying to understand why I was seeing this being with this 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 hexagram pentagram mm -hmm. one minute it's a pentagram the next minute it's a hexagram so i guess it depends on when they, how they turn it i don't know or what fields interact with it mm -hmm. you know i said to myself why am i seeing this person on a lemurian timeline and I, I couldn't, I mean, literally etched in a Lemurian timeline with this guiding star, this death star. Mm -hmm. 
there prior to the fall of this place? And why is it that this person is here today and their mission is to correct a lot of this mistake, these mistakes? So what you're it's saying only is fair. Saying, it's only fair. Yeah, you what you create saying, a mess, you clear it. You come back I mean, and you fix well, it. Yeah, you create a mess and you come back and you fix it. You know? And you harvest a lot of experience on the way in between. And then you ascend. Then you ascend. You don't get yeah. to stay here anymore. You get to yeah. ascend. Yeah. 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 You if you ascend. clear it. If you clear it. And it's important that you you answered a lot of questions. A lot mm. of questions. Yeah. A lot of very complex. Hmm. Thank you. I'm Jenny. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we I think we killed it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe <laughs> so we have to it. split that up. Yeah. Into I mean, two I, or I can... three parts. Yeah. Because two 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 hours fifteen, nobody's listening to that. No. <laughs> Nobody has time to listen. Yeah, they, <laughs> but I love I love like long form videos. Yeah. You know, but most people it's like five minutes and they're gone, you know. But this is this was really good because I kept saying to myself, I said, okay. Why am I seeing them pre-flood? Mm. And why am I... And you know what I realized? I realized what caused the flood was this star and this cube. I just don't know the physics behind how they oh. did Oh, it was a meteorite shower that rained but down on Earth. Mm. But and how did the star and the cube do it? By altering gravitational fields, maybe? The star and the cube. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So, 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 so Saturn, what did they do? Did they tilt the northern axis of Saturn and then tilted Mars? <laughs> the North Pole, the North Pole of Saturn, which would be the cube, and then tilt the North Pole of Mars. That would do it. On, on, on that end, I have no clue. Mm -hmm. I, I just know that uh, we have the records of a meteorite mm -hmm. shower 26,400 yeah. years ago, um, which is kind of, Earth is crossing in da a, da a dangerous area in this mm -hmm. cycle. Yeah, 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 yeah. And last time it hit mm. completely entire North America and most of Europe down to Romania and everything that remained was a thick layer of ash. Right. And this is an event that is known in history. Yeah, this I know. It's kind of as the serpents coming down from heaven mm. in the mythology, which is the meteorites. And this mm. is also the arrival of the Black Goo that is found in meteorites. And what it did basically was heating up the surface to a degree mm -hmm. that the both poles mm -hmm. melted within two weeks. And we had a plus of 200 meters in, in sea levels. Mm -hmm. This is what is recorded as the big flood. But, but the, the, the... How can a guiding star, how can a, a, a some sort of star machine a uh, hexagonal machine and a cube, a cubic machine do this. Now, what I was told by someone who was very high ranking, they said to me that it was a black cube that created this universe. We're going again. Oh my God, we're still going. We're still going. <laughs> Are you guys bored? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, anyway. So. But it's, it's, Are you guys okay? I mean, I also, yeah. Okay, but it's a little late here, yeah. But okay, okay. Let's stop. Let's stop. Let's stop. Let's stop. Let's stop. Let's stop. And let's let's split it in in two yeah, yeah, parts. Yeah, yeah. It's excellent, and yeah, we record it. We send it also to you, right? Yeah, so, wonderful. Yeah, let's. I, I I wrap it up because otherwise we <laughs> go. <on>. Right. <laughs> So well, thank you very much. Mm. Uh, Same here. It was great. It was great. Many many things are uh, fits mm. together, different views, same same outcome, right? Mm. Yeah. And yes. what I like is I, I like that I can I can 
because I'm seeing these things spiritually, but I like how you incorporate the actual reality of these things in history. You know, it was good. Let's do it again. Exactly. All right. So yeah. that, okay. Have a nice right. day in your time. Yeah, and good night. Yeah. To yeah. And thank you. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> okay. So.